All right, so today I'll be talking about a replacement carburetor option for the Kimco series machines, uh, as well as the Kimco made machines, uh, the Arctic Cat DVX50, DVX90, and the Kawasaki KFX50 and KFX90, which are also made by Kimco. So this will do those machines, as well as the Kimco itself, uh, the 50, 70, and the 90cc machines all use this Kimco um, a key and carburetor. So one of the easiest ways to tell whether this procedure will work or the replacement carb, whether you have the electric choke. If you have the electric choke, you're in. So black box, there's a choke underneath, and here's the power wire. And uh, there's a great machine, um, these Kimco machines, they're quite capable. Um, the carburetor's a little bit to be desired, and, and uh, some people are reporting some prob problems with the electric uh, choke. And it's really not adjustable. It has a fixed pilot jet, so it's just not a, just not a great carburetor. So what you're going to want to do is remove this carburetor. Very easy. Um, my suggestion would be to kind of start from the left side. We'll call this the driver's side, and uh, obviously drain the fuel first. As with any carburetor, drain right there, flat headed on the bottom, runs down to a hose. Drain the carb. You have uh, two eight millimeter bolts that have to be removed. So you can remove the one from this side, and then when you swing around to the other side, you can remove your second eight millimeter bolt. You have one band clamp with a Phillips screwdriver, one fuel line, and your, uh, your throttle assembly uh, just basically unscrews. Just grab the whole thing and unscrew it. Um, this cable, the wire for the electric choke, runs towards the front. It's a little bit difficult. I've actually removed the headlight in this machine just to make it a little easier so you can see. Um, but the cable runs basically underneath here. So you're going to be underneath the machine trying to figure out how to unplug it. And when you look at the plug, it is a little bit challenging to figure out where to stick the screwdriver. It's like, do you stick it, you know, in here? Uh, do you stick it in the sides here? No, of course, it's actually in the top. So you actually just reach your finger around the top of it. There's a little tab, maybe a little tough to see, but there's actually a little tab in there. So you're gonna stick your finger and pull it towards the front and then this thing will unplug. And voila, carburetor will be out. So once you have the carburetor out, it will look like this. As you can see, there's the fixed, um, Air mixture screw, electric choke, and here's the replacement. It's basically a direct bolt in. I'll uh, provide more information in the uh, description of the video. But one thing I'm really looking forward to is a is an air mixture screw that's actually adjustable. But the, the one of the biggest differences here is this has a manual choke. So basically, you're gonna reach down and hip, flip it up. There's the choke and flip it off when it's warmed up and there's your choke. So prior to installation, there's a couple quick things that need to be done. First, you have to swap out the jets that are pre-installed in this carburetor with the supplied jets. Uh, the supplied jets are a 40 and an 80, which are the factory sizes for the 90cc. I think they're a little bit lean, so I'm gonna try a couple different uh, jet combinations and we'll post the final results in the description of the video. So go ahead and swap the jets out. You can either reuse your factory jets, you can reuse the supply jets, or you can order um, a couple larger jets and go that route. One thing I noticed when I originally installed this carburetor is it will not run when the choke is fully on. Um, kind of reminds me of a steel chainsaw. When the choke is fully on, it pops, but it will not stay running. And that's okay for me, but for an eight-year-old, uh, it's a little difficult to explain that I have to you know, put the choke fully on, back it up a little bit, and then it starts, then take it off. So what I opted to do was adjust this throttle plate so it actually remains open a little bit. The easiest way I found to do that is pop this cap off, and there's a little tab, let's see, right there, this tab. What you can do is, as you can see, this is bent at a, at a little bit of an angle. So when the choke is operated, this screw, because the plate has a slight bend to it, will not allow the butterfly 
to close 100%. This will allow a little bit of air to bypass the choke plate and have the machine stay running. Now this is adjustable. What I did was I just grabbed it with a little pair of needle nose pliers and I just bent it just slightly. Um, maybe in an ultra cold climate, you want it you know, a little bit more closed and in a milder climate, you want it a little bit open. So it is adjustable after the fact, but I would suggest bending it slightly to have a little bit of air allowed to bypass the uh, choke plate. All right, so we're getting ready to install the carburetor. This is the factory original top set, original slide cable spring with the needle out of the carburetor that was shipped to you. So everything here is original except the needle. So we're going to go ahead and start the assembly process and I'll be back. All right, after a few days of uh, swapping jets, needle positions, I think I got the best combination now. It's a 40 pilot jet, a 95 main jet, and the needle position, the clip, is the second position from the bottom. I think this gives the best throttle response. There's no hesitation. Um, really running good, so we'll do a little test a little difficult, but uh, just to just show you how uh, much improved throttle response is. All right, here we go. 